So you guys know who Jimmy Kimmel is, right? Mm. He's that unfunny man. He's the yeah. Well, he's one of the uh, one of the suite of unfunny late night comedians uh, who live in California and support everything the left does, no matter what happens. And then occasionally they'll come out of their bubble and they'll go to another country that maybe isn't quite as left wing as California, if you can imagine such a thing. Sorry to interrupt the video, but I just want to let you know that we have a brand new selection of merch on our merch store. Uh, these won't be in the store forever, so if you do want them, go and get them now. Thanks very much. And they'll come back and go, hang on a second, we don't have to live with human feces all over the, the pavements, actually. We don't have to live with drug addicts just shooting up in the middle of the street. We don't have to live in a decaying civilization run by leftism. Now, they don't frame it that way, exactly, because they... I guess are just too stupid or too captured to be able to identify the source of the problem. Yep. But, um, but Jimmy Kimmel went to Japan and was like, Oh my God, what, what the hell's happened here? You know, there's <laughs> literally no one tried to mug me. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. No one stole my car. Seth Rogen was like, well, really? But aren't you happy to give your car away? Like he was like, well, it just never came up. Let's watch. Traveling to Japan. I realized that this place this USA. We're always chanting about is a filthy and disgusting country. <laughs> We were in Japan for seven days. Not only did I not encounter a single dirty bathroom, the bathrooms in Tokyo and Kyoto are cleaner than our operating rooms here. <laughs> Everywhere you go, the bathrooms are clean. They don't smell bad. They have those toilets that wash you from the inside out. <laughs> and not just in a hotel, restaurants, bars, truck stops. I went to two truck stops. I swear to God, the bathrooms cleaner than Jennifer Garner's teeth. The cleanest, <laughs> beautiful. And it's not just the bathroom. There's no litter. But they clean up after themselves. They bring well, the take garbage out, take to out their that laugh track. It's just a right wing rant, isn't it? Yeah, it's just, yeah. <laughs> I'll say that again because people probably take probably... out the laugh track. It's just a right wing rant. Yeah, it's just a video of some guy who votes for the very far right parties. But isn't that just amazing? Now, I mean, Jimmy Kimmel doesn't bring up that Japan is 96 percent indigenous, mm. according to Wikipedia. Wow. He doesn't bring up that it's homogeneity. That is the case here. I mean, and that, that I just, I just love this so much. He's just like, I just can't believe I went to a country, and it was nice. Yeah. So yeah, it was. It was actually most countries were nice. I mean, if you go back 50, 60 years in America, it was nice. You know, things were nice, and somehow things have become more diverse and left wing, and things are now not nice. And you're living in the ruins of the civilization that you quite happily uh, gave away, and so. These people and their politics are the problem. So how do we hold yeah. up the mirror to let them know? I don't know. I mean, they're holding up the mirror themselves. <laughs> like, like it's, I just don't know what to do. Other than, like, if Jimmy Kimmel will come out and go, yeah, America's a, an asshole. I don't know what we've done to it, but Japan's lovely. Mm -hmm. uh, or, and they always give the example of like Norway or Finland or something. It's like, man, I've got some bad news for you on that. Because these are not diverse countries. You know, all you can do is point to countries that are simply not diverse and go, well, I want that. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, do you? Um, They're never moving to Mexico when there's a new president, are they? No, no. They're, they're, yeah, oh, if Donald Trump becomes president, I'm fleeing to Canada. So are you? <laughs> I mean, that's not, not exactly a, an undiverse country now, but it's not getting any better. But, um, but I thought this was an interesting way of talking about Japan, right? Because Japan has looked at the rest of the world and said, you know what? New Zealand is wrong. Japan needs Indian restaurants. Oh. Japan needs diversification. And so Jimmy Kimmel visiting Japan is at the beginning of a process that is now starting there. Um, this is from 2020, Foreign Policy Magazine. Um, they say, in the bustling Uneo neighborhood of central Tokyo, the street smell of cumin lamb skewers, shish kebab, and kofte. While it's been relatively multicultural compared to the rest of Tokyo since the 1980s, the entire capital is becoming increasingly diverse. In the coming decades, similar neighborhoods will mushroom across Japan, uh, across Japan as the nation pushes ahead with radical immigration reforms. But even as immigration grows in this traditionally homogeneous country, uh, Japan appears to be avoiding the far organized far-right backlash that has course, coursed through the West in recent years. Good news on the horizon, isn't it? Goodbye, Japan. Fantastic I'm, news. I'm skeptical because I've seen the numbers for Japan. Mm -hmm. I reckon the reason they probably don't have a far right backlash in the same way they describe in the West is because they haven't done what we've done. I mean, like replacing twenty five percent of your population with foreigners is not something Japan's done yet. Mm. 
Because, I mean, in 1997, there was no far-right backlash. Like, you know, in the early 2000s, there was no far-right backlash. It took to the late tw- uh, sort of 2000s, early 2010s for someone like Tommy Robinson to become a thing when he was like, hang on a second, 20 years down the line, nearly, uh, something's gone wrong here, and actually, there, there are gangs doing terrible things. Did you know about this? And they're like, no, there aren't, you racist. It's like, right, okay. Uh, and so... Four years, yeah, no, I'm sure there isn't a massive far right backlash in Japan, um, because I mean they they say in 2020 there are nearly three million immigrants in Japan, but Jap- Japan has a population of 126 million, so and they're all going to be concentrated in Tokyo. So this is one of those things. Where it's like, well, and Tokyo is absolutely gargantuan, so you would probably not notice it if you're living outside mm. but um but this is of course triple the figure that there was in 1990 uh and they say japan ranks moderately high on global indices of acceptance and tolerance of immigrants well that's good <laughs> the, the japanese are just really accepting and tolerant of immigrants. they're gonna learn the hard way aren't they i i i didn't realize that they were i thought they called us gaijin yeah i'm very skeptical that that's true in the slightest from what i've seen of people who make content in japan it's the exact opposite. No, they're like, very progressive, very diverse. They, they love black people, especially. They literally ban foreigners, like, all foreigners from certain streets to yeah. keep them culturally pure. Yeah, that's, that's, that's progressive. Um, nationalistic and xenophobic far-right voices protesting the new law have failed to gain momentum. In fact, most Japanese society supports changing immigration policy. In a recent survey by Nikkei in 2020, uh, 70% of Japanese said it is good to see more foreigners in the country. Wow, I mean, it's just a survey. Japanese are like, you know what? I'm sick of this clean, productive, healthy, safe society. We need more foreigners. There's one thing we could do with, it's more crime. Is this Western media? Is it like Hollywood? And- I, I imagine this is. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but, uh, but the nationalist and anti-immigrant groups only made up 1-2% to of voters. Apparently, It's not like Europe. It's like, God, if only. Right. Um, but fast forward to 2024, and 2 million more have come since then. Uh, and so the, uh, the Japanese uh, labor ministry figures have released this, so the inflow is set to continue at a fast pace as Japan seeks more assembly line staff, construction workers, vegetable pickers, and caregivers for the elderly. Heard this story before, have you? God's sakes. Yeah. That's... We can't have machines pick vegetables. We need humans doing it. Why? Because I like the slave days. I don't like the Industrial Revolution. Just annoying to listen to. Japan is entering an era of mass foreign immigration, said the president of uh, a Hiroshima-based agency that sources and supervises foreign workers. Incremental adjustments will not suffice. We're going to do it fast. We're going to do it hard. Have we not been a bad enough example yet? Like, Clearly really not. I, I mean, I really mean this. Have we not been a bad enough example for the Japanese to look at and go, uh, how many machete fights do we need on the streets of Japan? To be fair, depends where they're getting the migrants from. Ah, well, you're going to find out exactly where they're getting the migrants from in a minute. Um, on any given weekday, it isn't immediately obvious that about a fifth of one area's uh, roughly 42,000 residents are foreign-born because most of them are at work. Ha-ha! That's not going to continue forever. <laughs> um, but this is, of course, because of Japan's, quote, rapidly aging society. And this is the problem everywhere, because instead of revisiting the commitments that were made in the middle of the 20th century about pensions, uh, we decided what we'll do is give away our civilizations entirely, actually. Um, yeah. Can't have the boomers going without their pensions. And I tell you what, there is a part of me that really does think that all of the problems of the West do stem from the boomers' selfishness. It's like, yep, we're going to keep our property right until the end and we'll give it away or we'll sell it so we can enjoy a nice retirement and pay for some foreigner to look forward to a, look, uh, look after us in our retirement home. So we are essentially completely liberated from our own families. It's a fair assessment. Thanks, boomers. Anyway, um, the, uh, the the chronic labor crisis has been the source of the problem. Uh, Prime Minister Fumio Kishida warned that the country now finds itself on the brink of being unable to maintain social functions because of its low birth rate. Then it shouldn't have those social functions, should it? That's what they get. And they're like, oh, I'm not going to... I mean, we're, I'm sure you're all familiar with herbivore men and... Uh, the the liberated women of Japan, where it's like, okay, they're not having children. Okay, then you don't get a pension. You don't get people looking after you. This is what happens when you decide, actually, my personal comfort is more important than my civilization. Retirement age goes up four years. Or just doesn't happen. There is no retirement. You're going to work until you're dead because you 
didn't do what was necessary right. to make it possible for you to retire later on in life. You don't contribute, so why should you take back? Exactly. Right. It's, it's just that simple. But no, uh, for some reason, this is just something that's completely off the table. So uh, this beautiful place needs people from, I don't know, Burkina Faso. Think they'll improve it, Callum? What about India? Think they're going to improve it? I mean, this went viral the other day because uh, it was just someone walking around going, wow, suddenly our streets are dirty. How, how did this happen? Yeah. Well, get used to it because it's going to be uh, happening more often. You know what you really need? You know what? You- <laughs> it's just one bin and then he turns and it's a clean street again. Yeah. Ah, oh, Japan. But you know, you know what Japan doesn't have enough of? It's subcontinental ethnic strife. Because I mean, we love that over here, don't we? Mm. You know, there's nothing better than a massive mob of Indians and a massive mob of Pakistanis chanting yeah. about something utterly irrelevant, or perhaps you know, people about Israel and Gaza and London, the you Hindus know, and the Muslims. It, it's just it's enrichment, great. diversity. I mean, I don't know what Britain would be like yep. if we didn't have foreign ethnic conflict here. And Japan obviously has no idea what Japan's like. And so obviously they get Indian and Pakistani migrants now fighting each other in Tokyo. I, I have no sympathy at all. None at all. Like, as if we weren't a good enough example for you. No, that's fine. You, you can enjoy the ethnic conflict that you have imported to your otherwise tranquil country. I mean, Japan developed loads of really elaborate rituals um, as a way of kind of social status signaling. Yeah. I'm still having a tough time believing this is actually the path they're going down. Because from the people I watch on Twitter and YouTube, like whenever this issue comes up, they're just like, yeah, no, we're not taking the European path. Oh, well, that's if wrong. You look in Japanese government and society, everyone's understanding of this. Yeah, no, that's like wrong. That one Muslim guy who um, discredited, um, went to that Shinto shrine and destroyed it. They were just like, out. Yep, it's gone. That's true. Yeah. Not dealing with it. But their, their government is uh, this year going to be bringing in 800,000 new foreigners. That's the plan for this year. Uh, and this is what they're going to get. It's like, okay, bad idea. What are you going to do? Um, they're already getting the scum of the earth turning up, obviously. is a Sri Lankan migrant who apparently raped two women and uh, has applied to be a refugee so he doesn't get deported. What? Because, of course, sending him back to Sri Lanka is just cruelty. Living in Sri Lanka equals bad. Yeah, again, maybe I'm being too trusting, but this mm. this just seems like something they would reject. Because mm. I remember when they did have, I think it was like uh, 100 guys from Sudan or something came, and then within a year, they deported literally all of them. Yeah, maybe they did. But that's not going to be the way things go going forward, because the government needs foreigners to do the work that the aged Japanese themselves apparently can't do. But Japan is automated. Like They are the most advanced country in terms of industry. They don't need Pickers and pluckers. Apparently they do, according to foreign is, policy, Japan Times. This is bigger than that. This is globalism. This is like oh, it's F level. It's like, undoubtedly just, globalism. But the, the, the problem is there are a seri- series of commitments made by the state that the, the people running the state have no other answer in order to maintain. And instead of saying, look, it's going to be unpopular, but you guys just haven't had enough children for us to maintain these commitments. They've been like, well, it's going to have to be uh, Burkina Faso men uh, stabbing people in the streets during robbery because I mean, you know. the reason they're industrialized in that way is because of this shortage like this is not new this has been going mm-hmm. on for what, like 20 years yeah I mean, technically since the 90s and their solution to that has been we're not going to do what the europeans are doing we're just going to automate everything yeah. we can and that's doubtless why they're, they're one of the last holdouts against mass immigration right so i mean we've done we did this 25 years ago and even then before then we still had significant amounts of immigration all through the 90s and in the late 80s so I'm sure that the Japanese have been like, yeah, we're not going to do this. But it's come to a point now where the balance books just aren't balancing. And they're like, nope, we just need those men. We just need foreign men to do things in this country. Otherwise, we're not going to pay for pensions, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, okay, that's great, but you're not doing anything to vet these people, I guess. Or you're just... I mean, I, I, why did it have to be guys from Burkina Faso? Well, I'd be interested to know an average Japanese chap's perspective of the West. Because obviously we live it, so we, we know what's really going on on the ground. But we see on the BBC, it just says, man arrested. You know, we, we see the gaps that are missing. Do they not see the gaps that are missing? Do they, do they watch not. Netflix and think, oh, all the faces are brown now and everyone's happier? Like, you, know, you know what's interesting? There was a video game called Pal World that was developed by a Japanese developer. And the characters in it are all ugly. And 
when asked, the Japanese developer was just like, well, we just assume Western people will like ugly, develop, ugly people because all of their games and movies have ugly people in them now. It's like, right, so they don't, I, right. I mean, you know, they don't understand that yeah. we don't like, it's not that we want <laughs> ugly people. But it's what's portrayed. It's because we've got a woke class of social yeah. justice activists who are deforming everything we produce. And I guess they just didn't know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and so like you know, when a random girl on the street has just asked, well, uh, the British are now a minority in their own capital, would you be all right with that in Tokyo? Um, I guess she would. No, it's just, you know, it's just. No, no way does she say yes. No way. Just, it's just a random woman on the streets of Tokyo. But, but still. Like, yeah. That's but, insanity. But again, think of it from episode. The country's still like 96% Japanese. But then, I just don't even think about why it. Why would you want to? Be, you, I could see that not being seen as a thing that could happen. Like, we'll never reach that level. I can see that perspective. But yes, I'd be okay with that happening. That's insane. I have no idea. I have absolutely well, no idea. Well, leave them to it. Yeah. And so, just, I mean, that's just really um, where to end that because just, I don't. <sighs> Have we not been a bad enough example? That's the only thing I can keep coming back to. Let's try harder. Yeah. I mean, New Zealand has been like, no, 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 we tried it. It doesn't work. Um, God only knows what the New Zealand solution is going to be to the the crisis of the aging demographic of the native peoples there. But what are you going to do? Um, Anyway, any thoughts? Well, they don't have one in New Zealand. That was the point. What sorts? Hell yeah. No, they actually had a growing population. Hmm. I'm I'm skeptical this is true, to be honest. I really find it. Hard to believe. Hard to believe, maybe, but um, again, these are these are not like um, yeah, you know, kooky. This is you know Japan Times, foreign policy magazine. You know these are not kooky right wing conspiracy well, like, outlets. Colonel Otaku Gatekeeper, I really don't trust as well because there's a guy I follow who tweets about this a lot. Mm-hmm. He lives in Japan and he's American, so he keeps up to date with the politics. Like the eight hundred thousand figure, I don't know if you saw that article. There's like eight hundred thousand Nigerians are coming to Japan. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be Nigerian specifically. Yeah, the whole article was just fake news. Yeah. Like it wasn't Nigerians. It wasn't in one year. It was over five. And it was yeah. skilled visas were being offered. Sure. So again, but they, they're going to join the millions that are already there. And whether they like it or not, I think they're committed to this path rather than revisiting the concept of the social programs. I think like we are, it's just going to continue. So I don't know how fast it's going to be, obviously, but um, they're convinced that it's happening and uh, that it's a good thing. If you appreciated that episode from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all premium content that's on the site, such as the Epoch series, this episode on the art of Michelangelo. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Twitter at lotuseaters underscore com on Twitter. Thank you and goodbye.